Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show, we ask the question, would Britain keep Babar Ahmed and Talha Ahsan in prison without trial if they were not Muslims? Babar Ahmed was arrested at his London home under anti-terror legislation in 2003. He was released without charge six days later. Ahmad was re-arrested and imprisoned in 2004 following an extradition request from the US. He is the longest detained without charge British prisoner. Talha Ahsan was arrested in 2006 following a similar US request. Ahsan has now served over six years in prison without trial. The two have never been convicted in the UK. The European Court of Human Rights recently gave its approval for the extradition of both detainees to the US. Activists claim that once extradited, they will not have a fair trial in the US and will be in danger of torture. A parliamentary debate on reforming British extradition laws took place as a result of a petition calling for Ahmad's trial in the UK. Almost 150,000 signatures were secured within three months but the parliamentary motion was passed without a vote. This week's Islam and Life asks, would Britain keep Baba Ahmed and Talha Ahsan in prison without trial if they were not Muslims? This is a good question to ask if we look at what is happening in the United States of America and now what is happening also in Europe and in the UK, there are questions to be uh, asked about the way people are arrested and especially, of course, Muslims. After September 11 or 7-7 in the UK, we have people who are in jail, Muslims who are jailed without trial, not knowing exactly why they are in jail. And now, because we have this uh, uh, request coming from the States about uh, uh, extradition, uh, European countries are sending them there. And we know after we have seen what is happening in Guantanamo, we have seen what is happening with people now. They are in jail in the United States of America with no fair trial and they are uh, uh, in uh, solitary confinement and this is where uh, the situation is. It's as if we are not talking about justice, it's as if we are not talking about fair trials and it's as if between what is happening in Europe and what is happening in the States there is a silence about these situations and people are jailed without exactly knowing why. This is a good question to ask now. What if they are not uh, Muslims? Would it be the same uh, fate and the same situation? And to answer all these questions, I'm joined by the brother of the detainee Talha Ahsan, Amja Ahsan. Thank you so much for being with us. Let us start with the situation because many people are saying, oh, if they are in jail, it's because something happened. And it's quite clear here that uh, there were no uh, trials for both of them in, the, uh, in Britain. And and they have been jailed without exactly knowing uh, what was or what were the reasons. Yeah, it's an outrageous situation. Um, as already mentioned, these are the, the longest times in British history people have been detained without charge, without trial. In 2003, the Home Secretary at the time, who was a person called David Blunkett, removed the requirement to provide evidence in a court of law before being extradited to the United States. And as a result, many British citizens' lives have been ruined, Muslim and non-Muslim. In my brother's case, um, he's never even set foot in the United States. He's never been there in his life. The only basis on which the United States are claiming jurisdiction is that one of the servers of a website, which is obsolete and has been obsolete for five years on US servers, one of the servers, including servers, um, in the UK and in Asia, happened to be in Connecticut for a few months. But, you know, if we go home and we go on our Google and our Hotmail and our Twitter and all these most.com.net sites, they're American servers. So does the United States therefore have jurisdiction over another independent sovereign nation state. So mainly what happened is that he went uh, on a, a, a website and the server was in Connecticut and this means that the United States of America, they have the right to ask about him being uh, extradited. This, this is the, 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 the heart of the problem. Yeah, the United States claim he had some involvement with a series of websites about um, the Chechen war with Russia, um, 
Afghanistan, Bosnia. Not, we're not even talking about, you know, because if someone planned 9-11 attacks or something like that, then, yeah, you know, maybe they'd have some jurisdiction, although they've already made false claims that, um, with someone called Loti Rahaisi, um, you know, who they claimed had uh, trained the 9-11 hijackers. Um, but back then, you had to provide evidence before a court of law, and they discovered there wasn't any evidence. It was completely fabricated, so the Home Office had to pay him £2 million or something like that. Now, that requirement's removed. So if Lodi Rahaisi was arrested, you know, 2004, 2006, like Baba and Dalla, he'd probably be detained without trial for many years. He'd probably be in solitary. He'd probably be demonising the media and so, so forth. So over the last few years, because this is something which is also important, we yeah. have now in Guantanamo, in the United States of America, people who are still in jail, yeah. and we don't know why there were no trial. It's as if we are in a dark hole here where there is no judiciary, no fair trials. But now we are talking about the UK, and, and very often the people are saying, oh, still in Europe, it's quite different from in the States. The experience of your brother, uh, Talha and Babar Ahmad is showing exactly the opposite, is that people are in jails in the UK or maybe also in other European countries without trial. So, so what was set, uh, said and done uh, regarding their situation in the UK? Um, it's absolutely <coughs> sorry, appalling because you've mentioned Guantanamo Bay, but people in Guantanamo Bay, some of them if they were on the fields of Afghanistan or in Pakistan. Now, in this case, my brother, you know, he wasn't on the field of Afghanistan or thing. He's been ripped from his family home in South London in Tutin. You mean he never travelled there? In yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's... It's It's just it's, because it's, he went so on a website. It's, it's, it's just... Um, I mean, that's what's frightening and dangerous about it, that people have been ripped from their family homes and, you know, detained without trial for so long. Um, absolutely appalling. Um, the extradition treaty, it, uh, we should add, you know, it hasn't just affected the uh, British Muslims. The Muslims have been um, in detention, but it's ruined the lives of many British citizens. Um, some of them are more But what do you mean by this? Because, because this is the heart of the question. Yes. Is it because they are Muslims? And what you are saying is that it ruined also the lives of many people yeah. of other faiths. Why? In which way? Um, you know, government introduces bad legislation, it might be badly drafted, you know, it might not have adequate protections, you know, they might want to just get things done quickly. And it might start with a suspect community like Muslims, um, but then it ends up biting back at all British citizens. Um, so you've had these high profile cases of someone called Christopher Tappin, who was from this establishment, white, affluent background, he's been extradited to America. You have someone called Gary McKinnon, who America claims hacked into their computers, he's go he might be extradited very soon. Mm. Um, the, but the, the thing is, and my heart and all Muslims should support all these, because Muslims, Islam is a you know, religion of justice, so they should show solidarity with all these cases. You know. But that being said, um, for example, Talha is diagnosed with something called Asperger's syndrome, which is a mm. form of autism. There is another case um, that I just mentioned, Gary McKinnon, and I'm someone who urges everyone to support his case. But he was given bail and not put in detention, and he has the exact same health diagnosis. I mean, we f I find that slightly odd, don't you? Um, and it's one thing with legislation, and then on top of that, you have poisonous climates. So you have tabloid media in Britain, which is quite notorious. Some of them say this extradition law it violated you know, British sovereignty, Britain should protect its own citizens. So we'll come to this. Uh, what can we say about, because there are two cases that you mentioned yeah. about Babar Ahmed now in yeah. this situation. Is it the same? Is it because we heard a lot yes. in the, 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 the media well, about it? Yeah, yeah. Baba Ahmed's got um, uh, one e extra reason, which is something to do with money laundering. Um, mm. I don't know whether, you know, there's been no prima facie evidence, um, but otherwise they're co-defendants in the same case. They were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Dala was arrested two years later. So you think, well, why did they arrest him two years later? Why didn't they arrest him at the same time? So, so let me come to this point, because yeah. as you are saying, it's true that we yeah. have, uh, we can even say collateral damages with yeah. people of other faiths being arrested. Yeah. But if we look at the, 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 you know, the last uh, 
uh, seven years yeah. uh, since uh, 2005 in this country. Yes. And we can go up to 2001 in the United States of yes. America. It's quite clear that this treatment is targeting the Muslims first. Yeah. And it's as if today, when it comes to uh, freedom of expression and to ridicule uh, you know, what is sacred to the Muslims, it's okay. Now, yeah. when it comes to no real justice and being people being arrested and being put in jail and forgotten, and this is what is happening now in the States and it's happening in this country, yeah. and now the European court is accepting to send people from this, the, 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 the UK to the States knowing that what is going to happen there has nothing to do with a tr uh, fair uh, yeah. trial. Uh, this is targeting the Muslims, so, so, so it's, it's, it could be right today to say there is something wrong in everything which is connected to the Muslim presence in, in the West. Yeah. Would, you, would you say this? Is this the feeling that you can have when you are dealing with the whole story? I mean, I've looked at other um, cases, for example, there's many Christian uh, terrorists who killed and murdered abortion doctors they haven't been put under isolation, they haven't been put under solitary confinement, they haven't been put under strict regimes, they haven't been denied access to their family. Then you have British, um, American Pakistani citizens and um, someone called Fahad Hashmi is one of the first extradition cases. And he was put in years and years of solitary confinement until he you know, broke down and was bullied into plea bargaining. I mean, so again, you see these disparities there. So, so what does it mean for you who you are the, the, the brother of someone who is just as appalling what is happening and yeah. now the decision is that he can be uh, extradited and, and, and once again we don't know what is going to happen in the States. Uh, now it's as if even the, the, the Western Muslim citizens, it's true in the States, it's mm. true in Europe, they are scared to talk about this. They say yes. okay if these are people who are on the margin of the community, okay yeah. it can be they can be one, two, three. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's not a huge number of yeah. people, but in fact, it's revealing something which is completely wrong in the whole mindset. Is at the end of the day, you can deal with Muslims, detainees in in, in Muslims and in jail inmates in a way which is not respecting the human dignity. Yeah. So, so how, which kind of discourse, what could, should be said to not only the Muslims, because you are very uh, clear on this, it's not targeting, or we, we should talk to the citizens, but which, which kind of discourse, what should be on, uh, on heard and understood by the, the, the Western citizens now? We, I mean, we've always been told, oh, integrate, you know, show what citizen, you know, integrate with citizenship. And as, as just mentioned, 150,000 people almost you know, signed this petition to have Baba and Dala, British citizens, Dala who's never been to the United States, tried in the UK. And through all their engaged citizenship, they've been alienated, they've been, you know, rejected. They've, they've gone, you know, most of parliament in this country is against the extradition law. Um, I think something like 85% as polled by Liberty. Um, and so we've gone through parliament, we've gone through civil actions, and still, structurally, they're not, you know, listening, they're alienating us, you know, whilst we're wanting to be engaged. Hmm. But, you know, we are here in the UK. Do you feel that the reaction of the, the British Muslim citizens, yeah. it's the right one? There has been some really inspiring community building through Barber's case. I think the internal police record saying Bab Ahmed has the same status as Stephen Lawrence um, within the Muslim community. Um, he's a famous black uh, hmm. British murder. Um, but yeah, we could be stronger, we could be more unified. I also think, you know, we shouldn't just claim exclusive victimhood because this has happened to the Irish people in the 80s. We're the suspect community at the moment. You know, Japanese Americans were interned, um, you know, detained without trial simply because of their Asian ancestry during World War II. Um, so I think we should like, you know, our liberation is bound up with so many other communities. You know, they've um, repressed black power radicals, you know, and still do. And, you know, we should join common cause with all these because it's the same axis of power. And, you know, racism is not just about people saying horrible things to you. And the media have said horrible but things. Would but would you say, for example, that what is happening to Babar Ahmed and your brother is racism? 
Um, the media reaction by some of the right-wing tabloids are certainly not treating the white British citizens um, in the same way as the Muslim, you know, brown <laughs> citizens. You mm. know, they split. But this is exactly the point. The Just and the extra, uh, let, yeah. let me put it clearly. This question: If he was not a Muslim, do you think he would have been treated the same way? They seem to have this preemptive thing with Muslims. You know. The cornerstone of justice is supposed to be, you know, your innocence until proven guilty, yes. mm -hmm. not, you know, guilty until proven Muslim, you know, so. Mm. I mean, I, when I was young, guys, to see all these stickers saying guilty until proven Muslim, and I was cynical and thought, oh, come on. And then, you know, when they came and raided my house, you know, I had police officers raiding my house at the request of the United States, and they asked me questions like, do you have any Qurans in the room? I just thought, Hang on, why you do you ask asking me about that? the Quran in your room? Yeah, I was just hmm. he was asking me that as a question. I thought, what kind of question is that? It was really bizarre. So how how do you understand this? What does it mean? Does it mean that once again, you know, you were saying that the Muslims should not uh, play, you know, uh, victimhood and being the victims or to feel the victims. But you know, if you have police coming to your house and asking if you have Quran in the house, it means something which is quite heavy on the Muslim presence in this country? Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm not claiming we haven't had wrongdoing or structural mistreatment, um, but um, we should, it's often the same axis of power um, against us. Um, you know, as, you know, racism is also about a neglectant state because the first duty of a government is to protect its own citizens. Yeah. So our British Muslim citizens, you know, they should be seen as equally as you know a white British you know citizen in the first place, but um, <clears throat> whilst there's unity amongst the non-Muslim and Muslim extradition cases, they you know the some very unscrupulous MPs or cabinet members they were trying to split us. Hmm. So, but this is exactly what is happening, and I think yeah. that this is a signal that is sent to the to the to the British Muslim citizens at the end of the day. Uh, uh, look at what is happening on what is perceived as the margin, the way the people are treated in jails, the way they are put in jail, the way they are forgotten in jail, and come to the mainstream civil society and be involved in, the, in, 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 in anything which has to do with uh, justice, equal treatment and equal citizenship. Yeah. It's quite clear by the way that we see the people are treated and the suspicion that is there yeah. on some Muslims that there is something wrong in the whole narrative in Britain the narrative in the West and the narrative in the United States of America, which comes to the question when, which was asked uh, uh, about Barack Obama when Colin Powell was saying, what's wrong if he is a Muslim? He's not a Muslim, but what's wrong if yeah. he is a Muslim? As if there is something which is wrong in the perception. Now, if we want to change this, you are involved at the grassroots level. You saw what happened to your brother, which is appalling and, and even not acceptable just to send someone not knowing what is going to happen there. And there is something which is so torture in jail in in the US jails now yeah. when you have you are alone in one room no uh, uh, always with light no discussion nobody this is psychological torture yeah. so how can we react to this what would be from where you are uh, something that we have to do what how we can be involved in the society just to make uh, uh, the the British Muslims and the Western Muslims realize that this is a big struggle. This is important. It's not marginal. That's a really big question. Mm. Um, well, it's only today that I received the negative judgment. So yes, but we went. You went through all the process, yes. and you saw how much there is disrespect and no real justice. Yeah. So that fresh in my mind. Um, you know, I'm still thinking. What? What? What is there left to do? You know, um, I've toured the country, I've, you know, we've done petitions, we've gone to our MPs, we've, you know, built a multi-faith coalition, we've got left-wing, right-wing people of, of all persuasions. Would it be, do you think that something should be done in the States when he arrives and, and something that has to be done there? Well, we'd, we'd um, demand some form of repatriation to Britain because some of the other ex early extradition cases, such as the NatWest Free Bankers, they served half their time back in 
Britain. Um, and after the trial over there? Yeah, mm. after a plea, plea bargain, because okay. you'll mm. be forced into a plea bargain. Mm. Um, so that's something happened, because I don't think people realise just how bad um, supermax and extreme isolation prisons are. They're inhuman. They're mm. putting it. someone 23 mm. hours a day with no human contact apart from strip searches in a seven-foot cell and letting them die in solitary confinement. It's, you know, that's not... That's just not a way to treat someone, let alone someone like my brother who has Asperger syndrome and is a vulnerable person, you know. I think half of all prison suicides take place in these conditions. Um, so, so. But that's, that, that's important to say and to repeat it for the people to know and to understand that they have to be vocal yeah. on, on, on think, yeah, these the, issues. The fighting against power is about keeping things in public memory, you know, the war of memory against forgetting. So make sure Tal has not forgotten, make sure Bab has not forgotten. And not only that, their, their, their level of strength and courage in, f in front of all this adversary, in front of you know, being abused or beaten up by the police in Barber's case, that's an inspiration to um, um, you know, ordinary Muslim citizens. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. And I think that during this discussion, uh, there is something which is essential. It's just not to forget what is happening and to understand what is happening, which is the way people are treated. And it's quite clear in these two cases, but in many, on many others, that the fact that there are Muslims is as if today the blood and the dignity of a Muslim is less important and they can be treated and no one is going to talk. When there is suspicion, uh, we can just go with it. And I think that this is with your presence, with the fact that we are talking about it, in the UK, but also in the West, in Europe and in the United States of America, is to say the dignity of these countries will be uh, when these uh, societies are going to treat people equally and Muslims among them, because Muslims, uh, as any human being, they have to be treated with fair or through fair uh, trials, which is not happening today. And we have people in jail, they don't know why they are in jail. And as you said uh, at the end, to keep it alive, to talk about it and to make it clear that we are not going to forget them and we still are struggling for more justice in our society because this is not a dignified way to treat human beings. Well, that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows you have seen and this is the way to contact us. Islam and Life welcomes your opinion. So please send us your suggestions as well as criticism on any of the shows you have seen or you would like to see. You can do all this by emailing us at islamandlife at presstv.co.uk. You can also be part of our online platform by joining our Facebook page, Islam and Life on Press TV, where you can share your thoughts with other Islam and Life fans, engage with debate and view past shows. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Amja Ahsan. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank and we are with you, with your brother and with Barbara and all the people who are treated in an unjust way in jails and elsewhere. Thank you for your presence and I hope to see you next week, inshallah.